Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how you can grow a beautiful tray of Genovese basil microgreens just like this on our reusable grow medium. So stay tuned for the video. Now, if you haven't seen already, this is our new product that we have available on our website, and it's a stainless steel 316 grade mesh. Now, this works great for growing microgreens, and I really wanna show you guys how to start growing different varieties using it. So today, we're gonna to be doing basil. Now, if you haven't already seen some of my other videos, you may have noticed on those ones, I'm only using a single tray for the grow. Now, you can use two trays, and that's why today, I want to show you also how you can do that. So here in front of me, I have three trays like you usually see with the cocoa core. Now, the first tray is just a no hold 1020 tray. That's gonna be our bottom tray where you put your water into. Next, I have a mesh 1020 tray. Now, I want a mesh tray for this particular medium because it really helps the roots to grab onto it compared to the slotted, where sometimes it can be a little bit more wonky, but it still works. Now last, I have another no hold 1020 and you want something that's dark because later on, this is gonna be your blackout dome. And if it's not dark, it doesn't make sense for it to be a blackout dome because why would it be called a blackout dome, right? Okay, now I'm done being a little comedian over here. <laughs> Let's get into our grow. So we already have our grow medium in our tray, which CJ did a great job just leveling this out for us because it does come rolled up and you do have to get this flattened out. Now, as you can tell here, it looks really flat and the whole process only takes about five minutes if you're curious about that we do have a video showing you how to do that so be sure to check that out we'll link that down below for you or maybe we'll put up a card it's gonna be somewhere over here <laughs> Okay, so now let's go ahead and dive into seeding our tray. So for today, we're gonna to be using Genovese basil. I like this variety because it has a nice sweetness and licorice flavor, and it's perfect for using in all kinds of recipes. We are gonna be using about a tablespoon and a half, which is basically 15 grams. That's exactly what I want. So before I seed this tray, I'm actually gonna give this a light mist, so that way the seeds really stick to it whenever I start to seed it quickly. Okay. And now we can start seeding our tray. The good thing about our mesh is the seeds aren't going to fall through this at all. As you can see here, they are just right on top. Now this is a one millimeter mesh, so it does work really great for smaller seed varieties like this. Keeps them from falling through like you may see on some other meshes. Now that I'm done seeding my tray here, it is time to water it. Now this is where some magic happens, which we will talk about here in just a second. Very good. Right. Magic. So for this, I have a nice hand pump sprayer here, which I accidentally pushed it too high and I can't push it down because of the pressure, but I'm going to use this to water my tray. Now, I don't want to water it too much, but I do want to give it enough to trap moisture in there and here in a second. Now, it's something you might be noticing is the seeds are starting to change color a little bit. I don't know how much you can see it on camera, but they are starting to develop this kind of, um, purpley clear tone to them and that's going to intensify over the next like minute or so and what that is is that is called mucilaginous now what does mucilaginous mean mucilaginous is a type of sticky coating that some seeds get and it's completely natural there's nothing wrong with it you do not need to remove it so don't worry about that whenever you're out in the wild usually you'll have animals that pass through things and that helps the seed kind of stick onto them and get stuck other places so that way they can start to grow up and develop into a beautiful basil plant in this case now it's time to move on to putting our top tray on top of this and we're gonna try something a little bit different this time which we're gonna take some water here and I'm just gonna kind of lightly spray at the bottom of this tray because, well, because sometimes the seeds will stick to the top. Now I do have a process for helping that and we'll talk about that later in the grow, but we are gonna see if that actually helps it early in the grow because why not? Okay, so now it is time for weight. Gotta put the weight on. So the weight will help us trap in all that moisture, which you really need with this type of grow medium. And voila. <laughs> so now let's put this onto the shelf here where it can begin germinating. 
Now with this particular medium, what I usually do is I only water it once a day, usually in the morning time whenever I come to check on all of our crops. And then later in the day, I'll double check and just be sure that it doesn't need any more water. If it does, I will give it a little bit more water, but generally I only water once a day. So I'm gonna to continue to check this over the next few days and I'll see you guys here in a few days for another update. Today is day four for our basil. So let's pull this off the shelf here and take a look. So first things first, gotta remove these bricks. Now let's carefully pull back this top and voila. So it looks like basically all of them are germinating, though there are a few that haven't germinated and that's fine. I'm happy with the overall germination rate here. So it means that we can move on to another step because I am seeing a lot of this plant actually showing and that tells me that it's time to move in to blackout time. So what I need to do is I first want to rinse this off real quick and then I'm going to water these and then we'll put them into blackout. Yeah, rinse wipe. <laughs> okay, so now I have that cleaned off. Let's go ahead and give these a nice watering so that way they don't dry out. I'm going to take this tray that was like this for the weight and I'm going to flip it over into a dome and now it is in blackout. So with basil, this is going to remain in blackout for probably three days. It does take a little bit longer with basil, it likes to stay very short, but I'll see you guys here in a few days whenever it is time for another update. And from this point forward, I'm just going to make sure I water it once a day in the morning to make sure they do not dry out. And I'll see you guys here in a few days. Today is day seven of our basil grow. Let's pull this off the shelf and take a peek at it. So these have been blackout for three full days at this point. Now, something you may be noticing is that this crop is pretty tall right now, which that's perfect. That's what you want to see from basil whenever it comes out of blackout. The reason why is because whenever basil grows, if you don't put it in blackout, <clears throat> it will actually stay really short and it makes it very hard to harvest later on. Okay, so now that we are pulling this out of blackout, it's time to move on to the next step. That is introducing it into light for the very first time. Now I'm putting this underneath three of these Brina 20 watt lights. They work really great. Um, if you have other lights you wanna use, that's perfectly fine too. It's up to you on that. Uh, and since we are introducing this into the light, I need to bottom water. Now before I do that, I'm going to install one of our little clips here. This will help me bottom water it and bam, just like that is now installed on the tray. So to bottom water, I just need to add a little bit of water underneath it here. And for its first water here, I'm going to be giving it one cup and a fourth of the master blend nutrient and bam. Now our tray is bottom watered and it's in the light. So from this point forward, I'm just gonna double check this twice a day. If it looks like it needs any more water, I will give it a little bit more water. But if it doesn't look like it needs water, I'm just gonna skip that second watering. Um, and I will see you guys here in a few days for another update. Hey y'all, today is day 11 for our basil grow here. And I'm basically just waiting for these to get a little bit more true leaf to them. Um, it's just now starting to kind of develop. I don't know if you can see it, it's pretty small. Uh, and another thing I want to talk about is at this point, I'm checking it twice a day if it needs water or not. Uh, since the grow space is getting colder, since Texas is getting colder, a lot of that water is staying in the bottom. So I haven't really been needing to water as much as I usually would in, say, the summer. Uh, so it's something to be aware of if you are getting colder temperatures, is your plants tend to not need as much water as they usually would during the summer or springtime. But anyways, that is it for today. I'll see you guys here in a few days whenever it is time for another update. Today is day 18 of our basil grow and today is going to be harvest day. And that is because I am really happy with the height and development of our microgreens here in front of me. We have a beautiful true leaf happening across this tray with some being a little bit bigger than others, but overall I am loving how this looks. So now let's jump into harvesting this tray. So since basil is a little bit shorter, we're gonna be doing two things differently today because we are using that reusable grow medium. Now, something I want to do is grab out my, gotta find a good corner, reusable grow medium. So that way, whenever I'm harvesting, I'm not trying to get down into this tray because it is gonna be difficult with that lip. And we're just gonna kind of carefully try to grab this off. We got a strong root structure. So what we're doing right now is I am separating the reusable grow medium from this mesh tray. So that way it makes it easier for me to harvest. And as you can tell, these roots are loving this. Now that I got one little area, it's starting to come off. All right, so I'm gonna awkwardly hold this and move this out of my way real quick. And I want to put this onto my 
table here so we can begin harvesting it. But first, just look at that. It's really cool being able to hold this grow medium and see the growth on one side and then the root growth on the other. Overall, I'd say this entire grow looks really happy. So that is awesome to see. Okay, so now I have this here in front of me on my table. It's a little bit messier than normal. Um, if you wanna harvest into your tray, you can definitely do that. But I'm doing things a little bit different. So let me grab my harvesting tool which today I'm gonna to be using scissors. <laughs> you don't see me with these that often. So the reason why I'm using scissors rather than a knife today is because with these really short crops, it does make my life a lot easier harvesting it with something like this rather than a knife where sometimes I have to be a lot more careful about my hands, which makes it take longer. So this is a little bit faster today, but I do really prefer using a knife whenever I can. Let's get that first harvest. And there's our first little harvest of these cute basils. We are almost done with harvesting this and I am very happy with how this looks. Um, the basil smells super good. It smells like that kind of light licorice -y, fresh, beautiful aroma that basil has and is definitely filling up the grow space right now. These are gonna be great later in some food. Okay, so I have finished harvesting our reusable grow medium here and we got 65.7 grams of Genevieve's basil. That was a beautiful grow from this grow medium. I'm very happy with this. And now we can move into one of my favorite parts, which is taste testing. So let's go ahead and give this a taste. Is it basil-y enough? Hmm. <laughs> That has a lot of beautiful basil flavor. I'm gonna love using this later today. I'm probably gonna put this in some spaghetti or something. I don't know yet, we'll figure it out. It's still early enough that I get to plan dinner tonight and these guys are definitely gonna be the star of the show. So now that we have finished harvesting, doing a little taste test, I'm gonna bring my tray back over here because it's about to get a little bit messy. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how we clean this. And for doing that, I'm gonna put it in a tray since I'm not outside where I usually do this. And I'm gonna grab this tool here. Now this wonderful tool here is a pastry or pizza cutter. Um, it's made of stainless steel and it has a beveled edge on it. And it makes it really great for cleaning off this grow medium quickly because it saves your fingernails and a lot of time. So what I need to do here is I'm just gonna grab this. I'm gonna do my best here because I don't have my full angle like I usually do. And we're just going to, wrong way, scrape off all of that stuff. Now, the more of an angle you can get on this, the better. I'm on a flat table, so it's a little bit more difficult, but you can see how fast all of that is just coming off. Okay, move it out of my way a little bit. Now, what you wanna do is just kinda hit all the sides of it as you can. You can start on the roots too, if that's what you prefer. Really no wrong way of doing this. And then next, looks like I got a few stragglers there. I'm gonna go to the roots and do the same thing. So I like to get it to basically this point here, just get as much as I can off. I'm not gonna go completely crazy and get this perfect because what we would do next is set this outside or somewhere where it can really get dry. And once it gets dry, you just take a little dry brush and you dry brush the rest off and it just flakes right off. Then after that, what I would do is I would sanitize this grow medium, make sure I don't have any crinks in it, and then I would reuse it. So what do you do with the leftovers here? Now the roots and stems, I would give this to livestock if I had any. A lot of people like to give this kind of stuff to their chickens or throw it into worm bins if you're someone that likes to make your own worm castings. It's really up to you. What we're gonna do with ours though is we're gonna toss in the compost because we don't have chickens or anything yet. But whenever we do, I can't wait to start giving them this healthy structure here. <laughs> Okay, that was weird. We're here. Well, you guys, that is it for our grow today. I have shown you guys how we like to grow our basil microgreens using our reusable grow medium here. And I have to say, it's really easy to do. There's only a few hurdles that you have to get over, but once you figure out how to get over those hurdles, you can apply a lot of these methods to it time and time again, where you could continue to get very successful grows out of using just a stainless steel mesh. So is there anything that would change about this grow? No, not at all. I, I loved how it turned out. I think our timing was perfect. The look, the smell, the flavor, everything about this grow was exactly what I hoped for. And I hope that you guys have that much success with yours as well.
So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below and we'll get those answers as soon as we possibly can. We have a Facebook and Instagram, they're both at On The Grow Farms, and a website that is www.onthegrow.net where you can actually find this reusable grow medium along with a few other products that we have on there too. So stay tuned for the next video and I hope you guys keep on believing.